This is part 8 in a series of videos in which I'm building this power supply based on a Ryden RD6006 power controller. In the previous videos I've gone through rewinding the two transformers that I'll be using and then we've looked at the various um, ways that I'll be configuring the power supply. So I've now got everything ready for final assembly. I've been looking at the various ways to mount things, so the capacitor bank um, PCB I've uh, drilled and uh, countersunk some holes. I've used a couple of nylon standoffs, so this is now uh, supported. I'll put a bracket at the top to hold the top of it. If you are interested in looking at one of these boards and you look at these images, then you may well notice that I haven't assembled this board quite as it's intended to be assembled. And the reason for that is um, it's designed to be used as a plus minus supply capacitor bank so there's a normal rectifier that would uh, solder in in this location and it will give a plus and minus output uh, with a, a center uh, ground terminal I don't want to use it like that I want to use it as a single capacitor bank so what I've done is reversed half of the capacitors so they're effectively in backwards on the board what I can then do is link the outer two terminals of the output connector and that will then put all the capacitors in parallel and I can use them as if though they were a single large uh, capacitor bank. Uh, the other thing I've done of course is to find a way to mount the heat sink for the rectifier. Uh, so what I've done is just on the bottom end of these slots I've tapped them M3, drilled a couple of holes in the base of the case and then this is now screwed firmly to the uh, bottom of the case. Uh, this is where the uh, fan controller board is going to fit, that's where it's uh, intended to go, so I'll retain it in that location. This sensor will be attached to the uh, heatsink, this will be the hottest part of the system. And so the next thing was to arrange how to mount the actual transformers, so they're normally fairly easy to mount. The only thing I tend to do is make up my own mounting hardware. Now you could of course put a single uh, solid bolt all the way through the bottom of the case, through the transformer and then use one of these cupped uh, washers uh, to hold the transformer in place. That will work fine. The only thing to bear in mind if you do that is that um, this top plate will be part of a turn going through the transformer core. So if this is then shorted to anything that's attached to the chassis, you'll get a shorted turn and very high currents flowing through it. So to avoid the risk of that, what I tend to do is machine and standoffs like this from Delrin Rod. I tap them to M5 at each end, and that means that effectively, uh, although there's a bolt at the top and the bottom, they're not electrically connected, so there's no chance of me getting a shorted turn even if something touches the uh, top of the, uh, the transformer uh, mounting washer. Okay, so the way these uh, work of course is they're screwed to the bottom of the case. The transformer sits on top. There's a rubber disc goes up the bottom of the transformer. Another rubber disc on the top of the transformer followed by the cut washer. Uh, and then finally the second screw and washer holds the whole thing down. If you do this, uh, you do not need to do these up very tight. If you do them too tight, you'll crush the windings on the transformer. Uh, they need to be just uh, tight enough to firmly hold the transformer in place. Okay, so that's it. So what I'll do now is a small amount of uh, wiring to get finished off. So I'll do that now. Uh, I won't do it on camera, it'll be fairly boring. It'll take me about half an hour. Uh, but then I'll get back on camera and we'll have a look at the supply and see if it actually works. So just to clarify how the transformers are mounted, the Delrin uh, spacer is bolted to the bottom of the case. Then fit a rubber disc over the uh, spacer. The transformer then sits on top of that. It's fitted so it's uh, central on the spacer. We then fit a rubber disc. That's then followed by the cupped washer and then finally the screw and another washer and then this is just tightened down until the transformer is held uh, securely but doesn't need to be excessively tight.
and then I'll do the same with the other one and get them wired up. Okay so I've got the supply all wired up, both transformers bolted into place, I've got the capacitor bank fitted, the rectifier installed, I've connected up the uh, fan speed controller and this is all now connected to the capacitor bank although I haven't yet plugged in the um, RD6006. I want to power this up first before I uh, risk uh, destroying the uh, power controller if I've made a mistake somewhere. So the next step is to connect this to the auto transformer. Okay, I've got that plugged in and we'll bring in the multimeter. And we'll check the voltage on this uh, connector to see if we're getting what we expect. And I'll bring the variac up uh, slowly. So if we've made a mistake somewhere, then uh, I don't want to risk doing more damage than I need to. Okay, so that's our design voltage. We were aiming for 68 volts or so, and that's uh, exactly what we're getting. It is, of course, uh, completely unloaded. So what I'll do now is um, switch the auto transformer off, and I'll get this uh, connector connected to the Ryden, and we'll see if it uh, actually powers up. Okay, so we are ready for the first full power up. I'll bring the voltage up slowly and at some point the Ryden should boot up. Uh, if not I'll keep my open for any uh, strange noises or smells. Uh, but fingers crossed it should come to life and we should see the uh, power supply uh, display coming on. Okay, The fan on the Power supply has just kicked in and we are seeing some life on the Ryden. Showing 5 volts on the input, I'll ramp it up a little bit higher than that. I'll take it up to about 10 volts. So we're not getting 10 volts coming through this. I've only got 41 uh, volts coming from the main supply at the moment. Uh, but we'll see if this actually comes on the way it should. I've got it set to 5 volts, we'll turn the output on. See if we can change it which we can. Okay, that's looking promising so far. What I'll do, I'll get the electronic load, we'll hook it up. I'm not going to do a full test in this video, I just want to see if it uh, fundamentally works, and then I'll start putting it through its paces, checking for anything getting hot, and uh, see what its uh, power output is. I've got the Kunkin KP184 electronic load connected to the ride and supply. I'll increase the mains voltage to 120 volts, that's half of what uh, it should be run at. I'll do this just for initial testing. So that's around 120 volts. We're now seeing just over 34 volts coming into the Ryden controller. I've got the electronic load set to a constant resistance of 50 ohms. So we'll now see if the power supply can actually output uh, any power. I'll set it to 5 volts, enable the output and turn on the load and we're seeing just under half a watt which is what we should be seeing. I'll try reducing the constant resistance value so I'll go down to 20 ohms and we're now seeing 1.2 watts. We seem to be getting a nice stable supply voltage. I'll try increasing the voltage So we're just under 5 watts. We're getting the correct voltage showing here. 
I'll reduce the resistance on the load again. We'll go down to 10 ohms. And we're getting around an amp at uh, just under 10 volts, 10 watts. So that's looking quite promising so far. I'll increase the voltage on the power supply. We'll go up to 20 volts. That's 40 watts, just under. Up to 25 volts. 62 watts. Okay, what I'll do now is I'll turn off the load and the output of the supply. I'll now turn the mains right up to its uh, rated voltage. Okay, so we've got the full mains voltage going in. I'll turn the output of the supply back on and the load back on. And we're still seeing the correct voltage, 25 volts. And that's giving us about 62 watts. That's drawing uh, 330 milliamps from the main supply. So all I'll do now is increase the voltage again. We'll go up to 30 volts. So we're now up just under 90 watts. 2.9 amps at 30 volts. We'll try 35 volts. The temperature we're seeing on the Ryden is actually the temperature of the uh, rectifier heatsink. I believe is going to be the hottest part of the system. It's not really getting warm yet. And we're at 121 watts. I'll go up to 40 volts. That's giving us just under 160 watts. So 0.84 amps from the mains. And the input voltage to the Ryden is showing at 64 volts. I'll go up to 45 volts, that's 200 watts, 50 volts, that's 250 watts, keeping an eye on the temperature here to make sure it's not uh, climbing too quickly. I'm also watching for anything else that may be uh, showing signs of overheating. I have actually drilled a hole small hole in this heat sink that the uh, sensor for the fan controller is sitting in so this fan on the back should cut in if the heat sink goes above about 40 degrees uh, centigrade. So nothing is getting hot, the transformers are still cold. I'll go up to 55 volts which is my actual uh, design limit for this uh, supply. So we're at 300 watts, but I'll see how high we can go with this. So I'll try 56. That's fine. 57. 58, no problem there. 320 watts. 58 volts. That's fine. We're at 335, 334 watts. Try 59 volts. We're getting very close now to where the ride and won't be able to keep increasing the voltage. In fact, I think we've reached that point now. Uh, we're just under 59 volts. I think it's as high as it will go. We're at 61 volts going into the um, ride and Now, I will be changing this rectifier at some point for one of the lower uh, forward voltage drop that I've uh, demonstrated. So we will be getting about another volt and a half. So it looks like we may end up being able to get right up to the full 60 volt. Uh, I don't need that for what I intend to use this for, but it would be nice to be able to max out the ride and supply. Currently we're outputting uh, 342 watts. Um, nothing is really getting warm, so it looks like this uh, will handle far more continuous power than the switching version would. The switching version is getting quite hot at this power. But this is still fairly cool. The heatsink is now up to 36 degrees centigrade. I'll leave it running for a little while and see if uh, anything develops.
Okay, it's been going for a while now, nothing much has happened. The heat sink temperature has gone up to 42 degrees. Uh, naturally that will run much cooler once I get the proper uh, rectifier fitted. Uh, it looks like we will be able to achieve the full 60 volt output. Nothing is really getting warm, the transformers are still completely cold. Uh, also the rectifier heatsink would be cooler if I had the outer cover fitted because, because air would be uh, pulled past the heatsink at the moment. It's just kind of coming in from the top and not really cooling the heatsink down. So it's looking extremely promising. It uh, seems like we're going to meet the full output specification for the Ryden. The temperature seems to have stabilised at 42 degrees. It doesn't seem to be rising anymore. We'll be running cooler with the case on of course. Uh, but it does look like we are going to be able to achieve the full 360 um, watt output with the correct rectifier uh, and also the full voltage output so that's looking uh, extremely good. So, so far I'm happy. I'll run this uh, some more, do some tests off camera and then in the uh, next video I'll do a direct comparison of this compared to the switching version uh, and we'll look at the noise level on the output of the uh, ride and supply and see how that compares with the switching version. So any comments, um, any questions then uh, please let me know.